many times mentioned in my previous presentation that the fundamental equation what we considered last uh, presentation was meant for a free electron system that is an electron which is not under the influence of any nucleus which is magnetically active in fact the esr active molecules or ions or systems need not contain a magnetically active nucleus in the sense a molecule even without a single nucleus with i is equal to non zero value or simply put, put, or i will just put it like this even if all the nucleus are of i is equal to zero value still a molecule can show a esr spectrum by virtue of it having a unpaired electron or odd number of electrons such system is one sulfide ion system where there is no magnetic nuclei at all either sulfur or oxygen nuclei they are not magnetically active all these isotopes are not magnetically active all of them i is equal to 0 therefore sulfide ion does give rise to an esr spectrum which is almost comparable to a free electron system but however since we know that all molecules do not exclusively contain nuclei with i is equal to 0 most of them by virtue of presence of a single hydrogen nucleus i is equal to half they do contain nuclei with i is equal to half which can influence the behavior of the electrons magnetic moment in the field now what happens to such systems and what is its influence or how do such systems show up in the electronics in the ASR spectrum that is what is our today's point of discussion or simply put it like this when an electron is under the influence of a nucleus with i is equal to non-zero value what happens to its ESR spectrum will it be same in the sense it will give a single line like a free electron system or is there splitting of lines is there a shift in the position of lines these are the factors which we are going to or these are the top these are the concepts which we are going to consider in our discussion now like you know from your nmr thing that a nucleus which is neighboring to another nucleus with i is equal to non zero value will have its line or have its absorbance line split up in the electron in the nmr spectrum this uh, we call simply splitting now why does that happen because the magnetic moment of the nucleus under consideration interact with the magnetic moment of the neighboring nucleus with i is equal to non zero value if a magnetic nuclei can interact with the neighboring spinning nucleus in fact there is no reason why it should not interact with the electron spin if i have to repeat this if a magnetic nuclei can interact with its neighboring spinning nucleus the same can be extrapolated where a magnetic nuclei or nucleus is interacting with magnetically active spinning electron like we have interactions possible in nmr we do have interactions possible in esr also this phenomena of interaction of the spin of the electron with that of the magnetic nuclei neighboring or surrounding it is called nuclear hyperfine interaction let us take the simplest case of nuclear hyperfine interaction. What do we want? We want an electron which is interacting with a nucleus with i is equal to non-zero value. Which is the simplest system we can imagine for this. Of course, it's an hydrogen atom where the hydrogen atom H1 i is equal to half. Let us see what happens to the ESR spectrum of hydrogen atom. Expectedly, the ESR spectrum will not contain a single atom. 
rather the line will be split how many lines it is going to split and how to theoretically conceptualize the origin of these lines that is what we are going to study in the next part now if you look at the figure here the energy level diagram the alpha beta spin states are that of the spinning electron whose s value is equal to half in presence of magnetic field external magnetic field the alpha and beta spin states get split they no longer are degenerate if for example it is a free electron there is a single transition possible from beta to alpha set which give you a single line in the esr spectrum but now it is no longer a free electron it is now interacting with its nucleus whose i value is equal to half now the hyperfine interaction that is what we refer to with this in our previous slide the interaction of the electron with its nucleus or the with the neighboring surrounding nucleus with i is equal to non zero value is called hyperfine interaction what is the uh, outcome of this hyperfine interaction that now let us go back to the nucleus the nucleus i is equal to half will have the possible mi values two possible mi values in 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 the form of mi is equal to half and mi is equal to minus half plus half and minus half this is again the fundamental feature of a spinning charge that its z component of the angular momentum gets split or gets of different energies non degenerate when an external field is applied the beta state of the electron please remember the alpha state of the electron now interact with the mi values or now interact with the z component of the angular momentum of the nucleus or simply put the ms of the electron will interact with the mi of the nucleus how many mi values are possible two values are possible therefore every non degenerate state spin state of the electron the beta and alpha will further interact with the with the nucleus and get split into further two states beta into 2 alpha into 2 now go from the the case where there was no magnetic field the alpha beta will degenerate application of the magnetic field the alpha beta became non degenerate the spin states they further interacting with the nucleus of mi is equal to half and minus half further getting split into four energy levels now for our uh, sake of clarity we have to designate these energy levels in the sense we have to name them using some terms the lowest energy levels ms and mi values are respectively minus half and plus half is it not the next one ms value is minus half mi value is minus half similarly you get plus half minus half the third energy level the last energy level or the level with highest energy would be plus half and plus half now when there are only two energy levels a single single transition is possible therefore a single line is possible or single line comes in the spectrum corresponding spectrum now when you have four energy levels theoretically how many transitions are possible many transitions are possible basically but do all transitions happen no why because the energy levels themselves do not determine the transitions it's the selection rule basically which determines the transition now um which state has relatively higher population of electrons the beta state yes this we have discussed in our previous presentation beta state now transitions are possible from beta to alpha always therefore we have possible transitions from 
if I designate 1, 2, 3, 4 as the energy levels from 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 2 to 3, 2 to 4, 4 transitions are possible. Please remember, it is not the transition is not possible within the beta state in the sense from first energy level to the second energy level or within the alpha state. From third energy level to fourth energy level, it is not possible. And uh, after all, alpha state is less populated than beta state. So, any transition should start from the beta state. Okay. But are all four transitions possible? No. Why? Transition is also determined by the selection rule. What is the selection rule for the ESR transitions after hyperfine interaction? The selection rule is here. You can see uh, the selection rules of the transition are delta ms is equal to plus or minus 1. This is always there. This is what plus or minus 1 means between beta to alpha states. What about the delta mi values is equal to 0. So, of the four transitions possible, now the restrictions will start. A transition from minus half plus half to plus half plus half is definitely allowed. Why? Because if the mi value doesn't change, that transition becomes allowed. Mi value doesn't change during the transition, that transition becomes allowed. That is the meaning of delta mi is equal to 0. mi minus half to mi minus half again is possible. What is not possible? mi plus half to mi minus half or mi minus half to mi plus half. So, considering or when we apply the selection rules conditions, many transitions become disallowed, few transitions become allowed. So, as we know well, every transition show up as a line in the spectrum. So, if there are two transitions possible now, how many lines do we expect in the ESR spectrum of hydrogen atom? Naturally, two lines. The first line corresponding to the transitions between minus half plus half state to plus half plus half state and the second line corresponding to minus half minus half state to plus half minus half state. Now, how did this line start basically? Or simply, uh, what is the origin of these two lines? A single line which was present in the free electron system has now got split because of hyperfine interaction. Now, can we make out some other meaningful uh, parameters looking at the splitting of the single line or simply looking at these two lines in the spectrum? Yes, of course. What is that? Now, if you go back to the energy level, if you see the energy level again, the splitting of the energy levels is dependent on the extent of hyperfine interaction. If the extent is large, the splitting is more. If the interaction strength is small, then automatically the splitting will be small. Therefore, if two lines are well separated by a fair length, what does that mean? That means there is a strong hyperfine interaction. If the two lines are almost close, what does that mean? There is a weak hyperfine interaction. So, the distance between these two lines, of course, this distance is not measured in terms of length parameters, rather it is measured in terms of field strength. Because remember, the x-axis is the field strength in the uh, ESR spectrum. So, the splitting of these two lines, the distance or the gap between them, directly gives you the extent of hyperfine interaction, which is designated as A small a, which means hyperfine splitting constant. Now, if you have to bring the NMR back here in this, uh, uh, in this context, we use a, a term called J in NMR. So, what does the J mean there? The J simply means coupling constant. 
what is the magnitude or the value of J indicate the strength of the coupling of the nuclei in the NMR. Similarly here, instead of coupling constant, there is one parameter equivalent to that, that is the hyperfine interaction constant that is designated as A. Now let us move on to the equation after including the hyperfine splitting constant A term. We know this equation, that is what the fundamental equation of ESR we discussed in our previous previous uh, previous presentation. H mu delta E is equal to G E beta E B Z. We will add two more terms, plus or minus M I into A. Now we can now write the energy of all four energy levels using this equation. A remains constant. Please remember A remains constant. The equations just <coughs> differ by the MI values. You can write plus half and minus half MI values for two energy levels, for four energy levels, but anyways, the only two transitions are allowed. <coughs> and uh, if we know the values of all other terms of the equation, G, E, beta, B, Z, we can calculate A also by using the mu value of the line or my using the <coughs> if you are taking the spectrum at a fixed frequency by using the bz value we can also calculate a and this has been done in fact for a very simple system like hydrogen and the a has turned out to be 1420.4 megahertz you know uh, but the x axis is in, in terms of B, is it not? The B uh, or the magnetic field strength. You can take the difference of that B values of two lines and then multiply it by the operating frequency of the spectrometer. It can operate at X band, the same thing what we discussed in our previous uh, class. You will directly get the 1420.4 megahertz for an hydrogen atom. Now, uh, if you have understood this, we can solve a question which was there in the assignment which I gave. Question number one, which was in a 9.25 gigahertz ESR spectrometer, that's the X band spectrometer, two lines appear at 357.3 and 306.6 mega Tesla. Calculate the hyperfine splitting constant A. Hope uh, you have uh, solved this problem and submitted it in your assignment. Anyway, let us cross check what you have done. I have just written the solutions for that here or solution for that here. Take the equation delta E. Write the energy of the energy levels from which the transitions are starting. E1 is equal to so much. E2 is equal to so much. Mi is equal to half and minus half. Substitute those Mi values there. Now calculate the delta E. So when you get the delta E, it you you know the G value, you know the Bohr magneton value, which are constants again. What is that you require? The strength, field strength B, which is given by 357.3 and 306.6 mega Tesla. Use those values and find out the answer for the A value. Hope you have, uh, hope you know how to solve this. Of course, you can also come up with your own method. You know the uh, two lines, delta E. You take any one line, write the corresponding uh, the E values, subtract the E values. You directly get the A value go through this solution again fine uh, that's for a simple system of hydrogen now of course molecules do contain a lot of nuclei which have which have i is equal to non zero value a simple system like for example a methyl radical uh, electron methyl free radical 
would be interacting with three hydrogen nuclei in fact. So from interaction with a single nuclei, now we will move on to systems which interact with many nuclei. Again here we have two different cases. What are the cases? The first case is the electron is interacting with equivalent multiple nucleus or the electron is interacting with multiple nuclei which are equivalent. Second case, the electron is interacting with multiple nuclei and these nuclei are non-equivalent. Okay. First, let us take the first case where the electron is interacting with multiple nuclei which are equivalent. And a classic example of that would be uh, would be a free radical, methyl free radical. Anyway, we will come to that later. Now, this is one more example of um, of uh, of a deuterium atom. Now, anyways, we'll we will stick with this, or we will continue for some more time with a single nuclei model. The electron is interacting with deuterium nuclei, and you know, for deuterium, the I is equal to half. I uh, sorry, I is equal to one. Now, how do we split the energy levels for I is equal to one? It is simple. For i is equal to 1, what are the possible mi values? Plus half, 0, minus half. So the beta state gets split into 3 energy levels. The alpha state also gets it split into 3 energy levels. So totally you get 6 energy levels. Please look at this diagram. The beta state and the alpha state with minus half and plus half are now getting split into 3 energy levels. With the interaction or due to the interaction with the nucleus, of mi value is equal to 1. And please do, rem do remember, during hyperfine interaction, please write the mi value positive first, the lower energy, and go towards the negative side. If you look at the first splitting of the alpha beta in presence of an external field, m s minus half is the lower energy. But when you come to mi, m i plus half or m i plus 1 or m i 3 by 2, they are of lower energy. So, beta gets split into 3. In fact, it doesn't get split into t. It gets split into 2. m i is equal to 0 means the beta value has, but the beta in fact has no interaction with m i is equal to 0. Therefore, whatever the value of beta remains as such. Uh, so, you can see that in the energy level diagram also. For m i is equal to 0, there is neither increase in the energy of beta nor that nor decrease in the energy of beta. Rather, for a plus one and a minus one interaction, the energy has decreased and increased respectively. Alpha also undergoes a similar splitting into three energy levels, and you get six energy levels. A lot of transitions are possible when you have six energy levels. But of course, you have to apply the selection rule and see how the what are the transitions which are allowed. Delta ms is equal to plus r minus 1. So, beta to alpha always, beta to alpha. And delta mi is equal to 0. So, which are the transition possible? Minus half plus 1, 2. Plus half plus 1. Minus half 0, 2. Plus half 0. Remember, plus 1, 0 are mi values, which I am talking about. And then, minus half minus 1. 2 plus half minus 1. In fact, these three uh, transitions do appear as three lines in your ESR spread. And please remember, those three lines will have different frequencies of absorption or simply they occur at different field strength in the ESR spectrum because as you see, the first transition is of very high energy followed by the second one and third one. In the sense, second third means from Plus 1, minus 1, 0 to 0, or minus 1, minus 1. Three lines in the spectrum. How do we have to calculate A? The hyperfine splitting constant when you have three lines. The A is calculated taking the distance or the gap between end lines and the middle line. Anyways, since three lines or the end lines would be symmetrically placed in terms of its uh, position, compared to the middle line, both A will be equal. So, you have only single A value, that is the hyperfine splitting constant. Similarly, you have a nucleus whose Mi value is equal to 3 by 2. 
So your alpha and beta states, beta and alpha states rather, get split into eight energy levels. But all eight energy, all eight energy levels apply the selection rule. Four transitions would be possible, and these four transitions translate into four lines in the ESR spec. And in fact, in this uh, slide, even the hyperfine interaction constant a value has been calculated and shown to be 50 megahertz. So, when you have a single nucleus with i is equal to half, mi is equal to half, number of lines are 2, with i is equal to 1, number of lines are 3, with i is equal to 3 by 2, number of lines are 4. So, if you have to predict the number of lines due to the interaction of an electron with a nucleus of whatever the mi values, without writing the energy level diagram, how do we have to do it? We have to use the formula 2ni plus 1. So, what does uh, uh, 2ni plus 1 mean? n means the number of nucleus it is interacting with or n is the number of equivalent nuclei it is interacting with. All the three systems we have studied now, n is equal to 1 because it was interacting, the electron was interacting with a single nucleus. I value was differing. First case, hydrogen atom case, I is equal to half. Deuterium case, I is equal to 1. Whereas another nucleus with I is equal to 3 by 2. So 2ni plus 1, 2 into 1 into half plus 1. So you get 2 as the answer, 2 lines, 2 into 1 into 1 plus 1, 3 lines for the deuterium, 2 into 1 into 3 by 2, 2 to cancels, 3 plus 1, 4 lines in case of the present system or in case of the system you are seeing on the slide. So, what is the moral of the story? That an electron under the influence of a magnetically active nuclei will definitely undergo interaction with it, whose outcome is ESR's lines will increase in number. And it is also possible to predict the number of lines. But actually what we do in chemistry, we will look at the spectrum and predict the environment of the electron, is it not? I mean, while understanding the concepts, we are moving in a forward direction. We will take a system, consider the number of nucleus around it, and see how our spectrum appears. But practically, the spectroscopy is helpful to elucidate the structure of the compound. Therefore, you get a spectrum rather. Rather, you get a spectrum, the right side of your side, only the spectrum. Looking at the spectrum, you should predict the structure. So, for example, if you get a spectrum like this, what, you, what is your uh, interpretation? But there are four lines. And the four lines are equally spaced basically. So the interaction is identical. So the nuclei is equivalent. So, so basically you are looking at, you can at least make out one case in not that a nuclei the electron is surrounding is of i is equal to 3 by 2. Mi value is equal to i is equal to 3 by 2. Is it not? Yeah, fine. Anyways, let us solve some problems later. Uh, we will move on to now the interaction with multiple nucleus. The first case is multiple nucleus with which are equivalent. Look at this energy level diagram. The beta and alpha states are interacting with nucleus. I is equal to half. Getting split into four lines. They are again interacting with i is equal to half, getting split into, every line gets split into two. So four lines get split into two, totally eight lines you get, or in the sense totally eight energy levels you get. However, if you apply the selection rule, you will get a number of transitions. Uh, if, if you apply the selection rule, a number of transitions are possible. And corresponding number of lines should come in your spectrum. But you get fewer lines than the predicted. Why? Because as you see, the lines in the second interaction with the nucleus B 
first interaction with the nucleus A. This we have studied uh, using examples of three different systems in our previous discussion. Now, the second interaction of B nucleus. The splitting is in such a way that four energy levels become degenerate into two, two pairs of degenerate energy levels. Four energy levels become degenerate into two pairs. Which are those? You can go from the bottom. The first energy level and the second energy level and the third energy level are degenerate. Fourth is separate. Fifth is separate. 6th and 7th are degenerate. 8th is separate. So, although it is possible that more number of transitions are possible due to the degeneracy of the newly formed split energy levels which group into pairs, the number of transitions reduce. So, as the number of lines in the spectrum. Uh, for this system, uh, you can predict uh, how many transitions? 1, 2, 3, 4. What of that? 2 and 3rd, 2nd and 3rd transitions are of degen or of equal energy. Therefore, both 2nd and 3rd transitions fall in the same position in the spectrum. The same energy position and the same frequency position. You get only three lines. So now, an electron interacting with two nuclei of I is equal to half. How many lines do you get? Again, apply the same formula 2Ni plus 1. Here, N is no longer 1. Here, N is equal to 2. So, 2 into 2 into half. So, 2, 2 cancels. 2 plus 1. You get three lines. Three lines in the spectrum. So now we will move on to a widely studied example in ESR spectrum or ESR spectroscopy that is a methyl free radical. You know, methyl free radical is one of the commonly produced organic reactive intermediate in reactions. There are many, uh, many methyl bond cleavage reactions in uh, organic chemistry which proceed through. The free radical methyl free radical formation. So now, how now if we record the ESR spectrum of methyl free radical, what should be the picture of the or what should be the uh, nature of the spectrum? Methyl free radical, one free electron, carbon of course C12 I is equal to zero, so no interaction with carbon. Interaction with hydrogen is definitely possible because hydrogen I is equal to half. Since there are three hydrogens and all three are equivalent, we can apply the formula 2Ni plus 1 and predict the number of lines which would be 4. This is the energy level diagram for the interaction of electron with three equivalent hydrogens in the methyl free radical. The Zeeman effect, the first one, application of the magnetic field, splitting into beta and alpha. First proton interactions, two energy levels. Second proton interaction, eight energy levels. Third proton interaction, eight into two, actually 16 energy levels. But, you know, all these 16 are not distinct. Many of the energy levels group themselves as degenerate. And therefore, you look at the, uh, look at the outcome. Of different uh, look at the scenario of the transitions. Three transitions are degenerate. Another three transitions are degenerate. So you have four transitions possible totally, which show a pass basically one second, which show a pass. Uh, anyway, I don't have this uh, picture here. No problem. Which show up have four lines in the ESR spectrum of the methyl free radical. <coughs> now. There is one more uh, concept pending discussion here that is do all four lines are of equal intensity in the spectrum? Definitely no. The intensity vary but still predictable. The intensity is in the ratio 
as predicted of course you may think of the same scenario in case of nmr if a line of a proton is getting split by coupling with three equivalent protons neighboring how many uh, what what is the case you expect sir quartet 3 plus 1 quartet and what is the intensity ratio 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 is it not same thing here pascal's triangle will help you predicting the intensity ratio of the lines in the esr spec and you know uh, how a pascal triangle is constructed so now you have four lines in case of metal free radicals it is 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 this is a this is a energy level diagram which is which is rotated a bit instead of having vertical energy levels we have horizontal energy levels why i put this is just to make it make, make uh, to make you clear a bit that the merging of the lines do take place when we have subsequent splittings with equivalent nuclei that is what at splitting due to first proton splitting due to second proton and you see since uh, basically a1 and a2 are equal because whatever the strength it interacts with the first proton the same strength it interacts with the second proton so instead of writing a1 a2 in case of equivalent nuclei we just have to write a this is the scenario so you have two in two protons splitting so totally how many lines do we expect three lines that's that three lines even the energy level diagram is different and let's take one more case an electron is interacting with four, four protons or we should not tell protons because proton is an ion we should tell simply four hydrogen atoms in the molecule can we think of a case four equivalent hydrogen electrons should interact one example i have put which is a benzoquinone radical you see the structure you have a radical formed on oxygen and since there is conjugation all around the radical gets delocalized and interacts with all four hydrogens equally and uh, you also have to see that there are no other nuclei with i is equal to non zero value in fact there are only two other nuclei carbon and oxygen both of them i is equal to zero therefore there are four hydrogens with i is equal to half and four all four hydrogens are equal you can see there are two symmetry uh, axis symmetry planes which make all four hydrogens equivalent two symmetry planes which are perpendicular to each other therefore all four hydrogens become equivalent how many lines do you expect apply the same to ni plus 1 rule so you expect five lines is it not 2 into 4 into half plus 1 so 2 2 cancels 4 plus 1 5 lines. so that is what i have depicted here the energy level diagrams the first line without interaction one proton two lines two protons three lines three protons four lines four protons interaction five lines what is the intensity ratio one is to four is to six is to four is to one again predicted by the pascal's trial in the same line can you predict the number of esr lines or number of lines in the esr spectrum of benzene radical benzene radical of course due to conjugation all hydrogens it interacts and all these hydrogens are six hydrogens it interacts and all six are equivalent so simply go on six plus one seven lines you should get of course the prediction is correct you get one two three four five six seven lines whatever the intensity ratios of these lines 1 is to 6 is to 15 is to 20 is to 15 is to 6 is to 1. Of course, um, as the number of interactions increase or as the number of nuclei the electron is interacting uh, increases, the spectrum becomes complex. More number of lines appear and with varying intensities. Pascal triangle, of course, help you in writing the intensities of the number of lines. Now, Next case. Till now we have been making our electron interact with multiple nuclei with one condition. All multiple, all the nuclei which with the electron is interacting are were equivalent. Be it P3 in methyl, be it P4 in benzoquinone, or be it P6 in benzene radical. 
Now let us move on to the next case or a bit complicated case where the nuclei with which the electron is interacting are non-equivalent and identical. An example simplest of this is a ethyl radical. You can see for this ethyl radical uh, or the radical which I have shown here, the CH CH2 radical. CH CH2 radical electron is localized to one carbon atom. Please remember, it is not delocalized to another carbon atom, like in the case of benzene or in the case of the previous benzoquinone. It is localized to one carbon. Therefore, the hydrogens on two different carbons are non equivalent. And the electron with which the hydrogen or the electron is now interacting with hydrogens which are non identical. Okay, spectrum. If there are if the all the three hydrogens in the first case, CH radical, were equivalent, you should have got three lines. But actually, you are getting six lines. Why is it? The radic the electron interacts first with hydrogen and split into two and every line is further split into three because of interaction with CH2 hydrogens. So two into three totally six lines. If they were equivalent the number of lines would have reduced. Since they are non-equivalent number of lines are not reducing. Why this happens? This happens because when in, in equivalent uh, interaction with equivalent nuclei you form pairs of degenerate energy lines basically. But here you don't. You form separate energy lines. Now, like uh, a similar case can be again borrowed from NMR and compared. You get doublet of triplets, triplet of doublets, in which cases then the interaction is with non identical hydrogens. Similarly, here the interaction is with non identical hydrogens. In fact, by looking at the peaks or the nature of the spectrum, you can predict one thing directly of the structure of the radical is that the radical, whether it is present on CH2 or simply, sorry, not the radical, the electron, free, the unpaired electron in the radical, the position of it in the sense whether the unpaired electron is present on CH2 or it is present on CH. Both are isomeric radicals basically. But the position of the electron, free ele uh, unpaired electron is varying, is different. In the first case, when the electron is present on CH, you get almost a sort of triplet of doublet, sort of. Here you get doublet of triplet. Is it not? Look at the nature of the lines. You can differentiate yourself. In fact, this is the use of ESI. So, as of directly, you can tell the position of the electron looking at the spectrum. One more example for such case is a CH2OH radical where the electron interacts with CH2 proton uh, hydrogens as well as it interacts with OH hydrogens. So when it interacts with CH2, you get three lines, n plus one rule. Again, it interacts with hydrogen, you get two lines, OH hydrogen, you get two lines. So what are the total lines possible? Three here and two there. So three into two, six. In fact, the ESR spectrum contains six lines, and you look, uh, you 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 now uh, take a look of the take a look at the spectrum which I put. Six lines you get. Now. The extent of interaction is also unequal. If you look at the spectrum here, can you tell electron is interacting with CH2, of course, electron is also interacting with OH hydrogens. Whose interaction or which interaction is stronger and which one is weaker? Just going by the distance of the lines and the labels I have put here, you can see 
CH2 interaction with the electron, the hyperfine splitting is far more higher, larger than the electrons interaction with OH. How do you make out this? Just by the splitting. You can see the OH splitting. Less. Two less compared to CH2 splitting. Gap between the lines. So, in case of um, unequivalent hydrogens interaction, how do you predict the number of lines? Using a formula which is shown here. 2n i small i plus 1 into 2m i j plus 1. These m, j, n, i are all represent, all represent the number of nuclei in the first set and the number of nuclei in the second set. In the CH2 OH case, first set nucleus CH2, 2 nuclei, OH, 1 nuclei. I values of course were half for both the, both the sets, for both the hydrogens. So, how many lines you, are, you saw in the spectrum? 6. The same 6 times, how do you obtain from the formula? 2 into 2 into half plus 1. So, that gives you 3. 2 into 1 into half plus 1. That gives you 2. So, 3 into 2, 6 lines. The same 6 lines were in the spectrum. This is the formula which is now useful for solving questions like the one which I gave in the assignment. The second question was like this. Compare the number of lines of the ESR spectrum of the radicals XH2 and X2H2 if the nuclear spin of the X was or is 3 by 2. Now there are there are two radicals X is equal to 3 by 2. For the second radicals also X is equal to 3 by 2. How many lines do you get if it is an XH2 radical? X is equal to 3 by 2. So apply the rule to Ni plus 1. 2 into 1 plus i is 3 by 2 plus 1. So 2, 2 cancels. 1 remains there. 1 into 3 is 3 plus 1, 4. x2, h2. So now 2 n i. I'm sorry, not x2, h2. That's why I can radical. Coming back, only x, x h2. X from due to interaction with x, how many lines do you get? You get four lines. Due to interaction with h2, 2ni plus 1, n is equal to 2, i is equal to half, 2 into 2 into half, you get 2 plus 1, 3. So 4 from here, 3 from there. So 4 into 3, you get 12 lines for xh2 radical. For x2, h2, naturally the number of lines will increase like anything because there are two x2s with, uh, there are two x2. There are, sorry, there are two x nuclei with i is equal to 3 by 2. So 2 ni plus 1 for x, n will be 2, 2 into 2 into 3 by 2. So 2 to get, 2 to get cancels, 6. 6 plus 1 will be 7. From h2, it is again 3, 7 into 3, 21 lines. So this formula, even if you don't remember the formula, still you can work out mentally using your own, uh, own flow of thought or the own logic and arrive at the number of lines due to interaction of an electron with different sets of nuclei or simply sets of unequal nuclei. Again, this is a very important, uh, very important problem or a very important exercise in uh, knowing the environment of the electron. So with this, I think I can conclude this presentation where I was speaking about a hyperfine splitting. What are the things we have learned here? That uh, electron which is not confined uh, to molecules where nu all nuclei i is equal to 0 or simply an electron in the molecule with the nucleus i is equal to non-zero value undergoes a splitting in its lines in the ESR spectrum due to interaction with these magnetically active nuclei and this interaction is called hyperfine splitting interaction and the magnitude of that is called hyperfine splitting constant A. We also saw how to calculate A and more importantly we saw how to predict the number of ESR lines 
based on the number of nuclei around the electron, around the unpaired electron, taking those nuclei I value into consideration as well as number of such nuclei. Whether there are identical nuclei or two or three different sets of non-identical nuclei, still we can predict the number of lines in the ESR spectrum. So thank you very much. I hope you have followed this and uh, as always which I mentioned and I am pretty sure that you are not going to do again this. Please go through the slide, send your feedback, send your suggestions and ask your doubts. I don't think you can understand everything what I am speaking of just by a simple one time presentation. Please go through it again if you are not, if you are not understand, understanding. And an important message, don't take this presentation as the single source of learning. What is the presentation I am, I am giving you? This has to be complemented with the study material which I have sent or maybe the textbooks you have or reference books or whatever the information you get from whichever sources. Please take it as a supplement and then improve your understanding or build your understanding on based on different sources of information. As always, if you have any doubt, please ask me. I am here to help you out. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I hope for getting some feedback from your side at least this time. Thank you.